I'm here to spill the tea yet again, but this time it's going to be about grad school. First off, yes, 25 is a very young time to still get your grad degree, so we can just get past that. I will be talking about why I chose my program, why I didn't decide to pursue an MFA, although that is something I had heavily considered, and also all of my ups and downs of having applied to grad school for like three years straight, why I was so indecisive with very different programs that I was applying for, I ended up choosing mine specifically. So number one, why did I, at the end of the day, not decide to pursue an MFA, although I'm very interested in writing and I'm actually very happy with it. I'm currently doing my master's in international history based out of Columbia University and the London School of Economics. First year is at Columbia, the second year is at London School of Economics. The funny thing is, is that the I've already taken a class from the MFA program and I've talked to a few of the teachers from there and all of them have told me in confidence that they do not know the value of the program and that they're kind of confused at why students take it just because most of the program is writing workshops and if you've never done a writing workshop before what that looks like is everyone brings in their writing sample that they worked on for that day it could be a part of a chapter of a fiction book a nonfiction, an essay whatever you have and then each person is expected to have read each other person's writing excerpt before class and normally there is a certain allotted amount of time whether that be 20 minutes or an hour where you critique one another's work you say what you liked what you didn't like what you think could be better and for context i actually had taken and signed up for a writing workshop in this last summer before i started grad school so it's like around june i took a writing workshop and it was extremely helpful because it was the first time I'd ever shared with anyone any of my fiction writing. And when I was doing it, I had no idea whether I knew how to build a character, whether my writing even made sense, because up to that point, I had only shared publicly, I guess, with anyone else outside of my computer, my like more academic work and my academic writing or like the book reviews that I've written for online. I had never shared anything like more creative with anyone else and I had no idea whether I was like doing anything correctly. And it was helpful to actually sit through workshop and hear how people were intaking my work and what they were perceiving about my characters and my story for the first time ever. But I realized this is going to sound harsh. <laughs> uh, very harsh, but I realized that like in the room all of us were either at the same level or similar levels of writing style and their criticism towards me at the end of the day didn't mean too much because we were all kind of newbies in it together. Like the only person's criticism that I really cared about in the class was the teachers and otherwise I did not personally find the exercise that helpful with other people and also it was extremely time consuming. Go through everyone's reading through everyone's writing excerpts for each day and prepare like thought out notes for each person in the class and i realized that and most of the mfa is actually that type of class and i realized i did not want to spend my whole master's sitting in a similar workshop class editing other people's work and for me the skills that i wanted to gain from my master's was more on the research side of things rather than the writing. I felt like writing is something that you can work at on your own. Like obviously it is extremely helpful to get like mentorship and to have criti critique from like other readers and teachers and actually like crafted people who are good at what they do. That's immense, it's huge. But I knew that that skill I could work more on by myself, whereas it felt like how to research in an archive and how to write history and how to actually properly research that is not something I could just easily get in a workshop. I mean, I'm sure I could have actually figured that out if I really wanted to, but I just, the skill set that I wanted to gain I felt like I needed the master's for, whereas I didn't feel like I needed a master's to get better at writing, if that makes sense. And the other thing that I wanted to say is, again, as a person who's not doing an MFA, so if you are, take this with a grain of salt, tell me how your experiences have been. 
but it seems like the massive benefit of M M MFA is the structure that it gives you to actually finish the project you're working on and hopefully have that lead to a book. I think it's really hard to actually write a book, not because it's like, I mean, it is technically hard, but also I think finding the time to actually do it. And if you have no accountability, it's really easy to just never finish it, never do it. And I think these types of programs are really helpful to actually force you to do all of that. Now, why was I happy? Why am I happy with my program? So before I actually started my program, I had checked that we were allowed with Columbia to take classes outside of our curriculum and our departments. As long as we met all of the necessary requirements to graduate within our departments, we were allowed to take extra classes. And that's exactly what I did. So last semester I took an MFA class. This semester I'm taking a class that's based within the journalism school. And I feel like both classes have been perfect in terms of what I wanted and the right amount of skills that I needed to gain within writing and how to like learn how to pitch stories and how to put proposals together and everything like that. And I don't feel like, I mean, maybe I could benefit from more writing classes. I think I've gotten all of the things that I wanted to just from these two classes. And that was also a huge reason why I chose my program is because I knew that I could cross register. So if you're thinking about pursuing writing, I think think look at schools that where you could also potentially cross register and take multiple different disciplines to work within your within your area. This also reminds me of an advice that I read from a writer who he, I, he or she said, I have no idea who it was, that their best writing advice is to just live because you need material for the writing. And actually the most interesting writers are the people who do and think outside of writing. And that's also why I wanted to have a different kind of background, so just history, than just having a general focus on writing. Because I think that's how you pursue different ideas. And for me, I thought the best way for me to do that was to pursue this type of masters. So that's my whole reasoning of why, reasoning and rationale for why I didn't end up applying for an MFA. I'm still enrolled and took an MFA class, which I absolutely loved and it was one of my favorite classes. But at the end of the day, I didn't really know also what I would do with the masters in writing and what type of jobs that might lead to. Which leads me to the next segue, <laughs> which is, jobs. What type of jobs can I get with a master's in history? This is a question I've gotten a few times. And I'll be honest, I'm not an expert because I haven't had to do that yet. So when the time rolls around, I will be sharing that, but we're not there yet. I'm still finishing this degree. But from what I've heard, we've had a few alumni panels where people from our program have come to speak and they've done a variety of jobs. There was a person who was in fintech consulting, there was a person who was doing a museum job and she was actually helping open up the women's history wing, part of the Smithsonian Institute that's in DC, not Institute, museum. There was a person who did like nonprofit research and consulting. So it, there really is a wide variety of things that you can do. I think you just need to be smart about how you market yourself and apply your skills within different fields. And I knew at the time after graduating from college, I had done, I had two main jobs. One of them was in political consulting. One of them is, was in more business research. And I knew that I wanted to do a bit more creative work than I was doing. And I kind of felt like I was in a hole with more businessy things that I didn't really want to pursue down the line. And I was kind of stuck there. And I didn't need the masters to get out of that, but I do think it's helping me open up doors that didn't exist beforehand. And that was also one of the reasons why I wanted to get the degree that I'm currently getting. I think it all depends again of how you market yourself, but basically I think you can get different jobs with a history degree if you're smart about it and you know how to position yourself within the market and how to also kind of tell a narrative of what type of skills you gained from the masters that might be relevant to whatever job you're applying for. I mean, I have had moments where I thought about job applying and went into a little mini panic, but I'm trying to suppress those thoughts because that's like a year and a half away, less than a year and a half away. I don't know, let's not think about it. We're not there yet. 
that is not a concern right now. And the other thing that I wanted to be honest about and chat about was whether I've actually been liking my program and do I think it's been worth it thus far. And for me, it's a resounding big, huge yes so far. I feel like it's exactly what I wanted because I, first of all, I was really craving to be back in the classroom and I knew at least I wanted to do it at least once in my life again as with the same concentration that I had when I was in college and I'm getting that and I'm loving it. And also it's allowing me to think about the things that I've been thinking about and have been percolating at the back of my brain. I feel like for the past three years, both in my writing and just like reading, I feel like I, I will, I had very general thoughts about different topics that I was interested in, but having a more structured curriculum to think through them and also having them with a person in the field who is really like helping you think through larger themes is massive. Like I am learning so much and it makes me also think that like hopefully when I finish my grad degree, I don't know, we'll see how much time I'll really have and if this is a very idealistic thing to say. But I'd like to, in some form, try to keep like taking some sort of classes or like giving myself specific types of readings to think through. And it's also just helping me think more broadly and how to criticize certain texts much better, which I didn't have before. And I feel like it's giving me a framework to think from that's a bit more elevated than when I got at undergrad. And I knew that I couldn't really get it on my own fully again, I think you can, like, especially in this digital age, you can technically do a lot of things on your own. But I think it's still really helpful. And there's a huge benefit to having an in person thing and also learning from your peers as well. And having actually that structure to do all of this thinking. That's like what grad school is for. So I found it extremely helpful. But I also want to just say that it's not a complete necessity for everyone. And it isn't like everyone has to do this to get that experience. The other thing that I wanted to touch upon is the fact that it is two years and the first year is at Columbia and the second year is at London School of Economics. I haven't really talked about that actually. So I am expected to move to London in September for the program and our second year will be based there. And the education systems are very different. And I really like this program because you get the best of both worlds. You get the US and the UK education, which I think is very unique and most people don't get that. They have to choose one or the other. And I mean, the first thing that is super <laughs> different from the two is the UK is definitely much cheaper, especially since most of their masters are just a year. The price tag is very different than a US education. And also the approach to UK education versus US education, I think is very different. US education, I think, it's a little bit more hands-on from what I can tell and what I've heard because I've had experience in both already. The professor, I think this classes are structured a bit differently and you also have more assignments. Whereas in the UK, I think you kind of just have like the final at the end and that's kind of the main metric that you're, that you're assessed from, which is a little bit stressful if I think having many different assignments throughout the year is less stressful than having one large thing at the end, but that's how they're set up. And in the UK, I think the professors expect you to just kind of be on your own wavelength a little bit more than in the US. In the US, there's a lot of hand holding that sometimes happens, which I think is great because I think it gives you a lot. But in the UK, I think you there's benefits in terms of like you, you pursue the things that you want on your own time and it's all fully up to you to what you end up deciding to take from this education or not. I'm excited for the, U and it's funny because we have a dissertation as part of this master's and this first, like, it seems like Columbia is wanting us from us a lot to do a lot. We have to like write a literature review and our full dissertation proposal and everything before we go to London. And I think it's because they know that when we go to London, we're not going to be doing as much because there's not going to be as many deadlines. And like, I think they're just scared that we don't leave this all for last minute next year, like to write our dissertation in like a month. So they're giving us a lot of prep work now ahead of time, which is kind of funny. It's a little frustrating right now, but that is the way it is. And I think if you're thinking between like US and UK, cause I'd considered this a lot before, I think there's like multiple factors that you have to take into account. 
financial, yes. And also you don't, you have to take into account not just like the price tag of the education, but also like you getting there, like you moving there, living there, living costs, et cetera, as well. And also whether you know, if you want to like return back to your home country, how applicable will a degree from a university abroad might be if this is assuming that if you're going to the UK, you're not already living in the UK. So I think you just have to like think about how your master's will transfer wherever you end up planning to be, which is definitely something I thought about. I mean, the advice that they say is that in the US, the employers mainly know Oxford, Cambridge and LSE, maybe Kings. But like those are kind of the main ones that they recognize, even if it sounds very elitist, which it is. But I think that's just the truth of it. So you just have to like think about how you're going to use that and whether you think moving to the UK is different. I will say if I'm glad that I didn't end up doing just a UK master's because I had considered that before, because those are only a year. A year is really not that long of a time, especially for graduate school. Like I'm almost about to finish my first year and I feel like I just began. Also, I have no idea how I would have written a dissertation in a year. Like I'm forming my thoughts now for my literature review, but if I had to like produce in the next two months this massive research, I don't think it would be good at all. Like it would just be a long paper and I wouldn't actually have done that much original research as I am allowed to do with all of the time that I'm given now with my master's. So I think that is a huge plus is in the US a lot of the time the program are longer and I think that you do need that time to properly feel like you got something from the program and properly study the subject that you're in because like again it's such a special thing and if you know you're only going to do it once you might as well like give it your all if you can then spend like do it very quickly and then feel like it was done in the blink of an eye. So those are all my thoughts recently that I've been having about grad school. I hope this was helpful in any way. I'd be curious to hear from you if you're thinking about grad school or you're like, I never want to go, tell me why. <laughs> um, or if you've done a degree and whether you liked it or not, whether you enjoyed it, whether you regret it or not, I'm interested to hear from others what their experiences have been and why they also decided to pursue further education or not later in their life. If you liked this video, remember to like and subscribe so that you can keep seeing more videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.